family group. As a group, we meet with teachers, parents and kids, and we do some activities, we talk, we try to find solutions to some difficulties that the kids face. I need to ask you some questions for my family group. Can you please tell me something that I'm good at? If I'm feeling down, I always know that I can always go to you uh, because we sort of had the same problems. Before uh, joining the family group, my daughter, she was a shy kid. Now she's open to give ideas and uh, to help other kids. If they get stuck on some activities, she can tell them how to do it. So she's more confident to talk and to help and to express herself. Human beings evolved to live in communities. Developing multifamily groups serves as a recreation of that village spirit where we create a community that supports each other in raising each person within that community. This is a way to get parents and children together to work on things that they're finding difficult. And it's really fun. It's a fun way of doing it. The thing that's nice about family group is it's in an environment that the children and the parents are comfortable with. It's parents and children working together and the children really like having their parents in school in that kind of fun environment. The reason it works is because we make the parents feel safe. You know, they're free to talk when they come and we get the parents involved because eventually it's not us running the group, it's the parents running the group. I think it's allowed the parent to um, have a better connection with school. Um, I think they definitely feel that, that closer link with school. Getting to hear weekly how the child's doing is really helpful and that communication has improved. When parents are concerned that schools are making judgments about how they're doing, particularly if they've got a child who has got some behaviour issues in school or at home. So I think it just helps that parents see school as being supportive and it's an environment that they feel safe in. I used to come to the school and I'd be behind a friend because the teacher I know was coming for me. Yeah, every day was the same thing. I'd go to the school gates and I'd go, oh God, they're coming for me. So I'd, I'd be behind a parent like that so the teacher couldn't get me. <laughs> because I just thought, no, I can't take it anymore, do you know what I mean? But I went to the group, I gave it a go and it did really help. Any parent, I think, with some uh, behaviour concerns, if you feel like he's the only one who got that child with this kind of behaviour. But when we meet with other parents, and they have some issues maybe more than your child or similar to your child, you feel like, no, oh, I'm not the only one. You really do see changes, um, both in the parent, in the child, and in the school system, I think. To see parents that you hold your breath when they walk through into the entrance hall, or they ring you up and say, I need to come and talk to you, and you just have to go and have a cup of tea before they arrive, because you just know what's coming. To see them wanting to come in school and laughing and talking to each other and enjoying their children and enjoying communicating with staff, that is powerful. Even though we start out with the premise that it is the child that needs to change, we know that through the group, over time, there will come a moment when a parent says, oh, I get it now. If we're going to ask our children to change, then maybe we have to think about doing something differently ourselves. The change that I went through was becoming a person in my own right, not just a mother. Knowing that I could help other families as well, give them the advice that I've used on my children, basically, some tactics or some things that we could use. I think engagement is massive. They, they seem to like it, they seem to come week after week, um, and they seem to get something from it, you know, um, otherwise they wouldn't come back. When we first started with the family group, we ended up with like six parents. Then we ended up with other parents that would just turn up on a Tuesday and it was, parents just kept coming. It was amazing. My son left the group and I, um, Serena asked me to come on and carry on helping, giving other parents advice. And that's basically what I was doing, to give me confidence to think, hold on, I'm actually sitting here giving other parents advice. You know, give me a little boost as a mum and as a person. So that's when I thought, well, I can do something about this. And I went and got an MVQ2 childcare course. And I passed that with flying colours and this is why where I'm at now. The thing that attracted me to the group was that it wasn't problem specific. So a lot of groups in the past I'd run might have been you know, specifically for managing anger or anxiety groups. This was a group that actually allowed me to target a wide range of behaviours. So we have children maybe struggling with attention concentration difficulties, children with ADHD, children with diagnosis of autism, children where there's maybe relational difficulties between parent and child, behaviour in the classroom, that kind of thing. But really a wide range. 
a family worker with three families is much more effective than a family worker with one mother or one child. It's that shared, that coming together, working together, that is really, really powerful and has to be seen to be believed. We can invest early on, if you put that resource into a school setting at the very beginnings of when those presenting behaviours first surface, the long-term gain is huge. Thank you for doing another interview with me. I wanted to see if I've improved. I've seen a lot of progress with you, Ryan. You have been um, sitting so much better in your chair and on the carpet. Because when you got the arm, you kick the ball over. But now when you get your, the arm, you don't do that. Do you think I've improved on my spellings? Yeah. Since we were working together, I think, I think you've got better. I don't see you get told off so much for not doing your homework. There's been a study looking at the societal cost of mental health problems. The burden is actually 90%, 90% borne by schools. The solution has to be found in changing the way schools operate to deal with mental health problems more efficiently, to harness the energy that's in the children themselves, in the parents, and in the education system for both sides, schools and children and families benefiting. Welcome to this multi-family group in schools training. This program is designed to help you with the skills, knowledge and techniques for successfully setting up and running multi-family groups in schools.